Well guys, it is a cold, wet, wintry day, and I can't remember the last time I did a video when the sun was shining. Holy mackerel, but I'm launching out of a different spot, and we're gonna do some winter carp fishing, and maybe some catfishing too. Man guys, I got a good feeling about today. I think we're gonna tear it up. I wanna see if I can catch over 200 pounds of carp today. Come on. I know it's cold, baby. You can do it. Well, it's been in the 40s and 50s all week long. It's been drizzly and rainy. The water's flooded and high. Just a cold, chilly to the bone rain all day. Tons of gear today. Six carp rods, six cat rods. Lots and lots of bait. We should catch something. Water temperature is very cold. It's 45 degrees. Lots of freezing rain dumped into the water. All right, guys, I've been getting a lot of questions about how to locate fish in the wintertime. It's tricky. The fish go from being spread out all summer long to congregating in a few holes in the wintertime. One of the best places to look for these wintering holes is at the mouth of creeks, where a creek or river dumps into a bigger river or dumps into a lake especially if there's a very deep hole at the mouth of that river. Then what you want to do is be conscious of the, the comparative temperature of the main body of water versus the river. If you get a river that's pumping out warmer water and it's got a deep hole right at the mouth, that's where you want to look first. All right, we're at the mouth of this creek here and it's gone from three, four feet of water to 10 feet of water. So there's a nice deep hole right here at the mouth of this creek. That's fish, that's fish, that's fish, that's fish, that's fish, that's a fish. So right here, there's a big pod of fish already. There's a smaller fish, smaller fish. And you can tell with the side imaging sonar, you can tell it's a fish because it's got shadows. See, they're kind of these long, bright, things with little dark spots, little shadows. Oh, a nice big group right there. Those ones are feeding because they're not facing directly upstream. They're kind of at an angle. That means they're moving around. They could be running from the boat or they could be feeding. That might be some on the bottom right there. We're kind of losing depth, losing fish, not seeing very many. Let's turn around and go back. The general rule of thumb is that for every one fish you see on the sonar, there's like five or 10 that you don't see. I probably saw 40 fish on the sonar driving through this spot. So we've got hundreds of fish in here. So uh, we're gonna see how many of them we can pull out. I'm trying to be quiet, not throw the anchor around or rev the engine too much. I wanna take as little time as possible for the fish to calm down and move back in. This is an excellent spot for big blue catfish and for carp. So I'm really at a loss for which one to go after first or whether I should just stagger the rods or what. So uh, I might throw out a few big catfish baits and then I'm gonna throw out some carp baits too. I think I'm gonna kind of mix it up a little bit. Got some leftover gizzard shad and white perch here. All right, got a three ounce lead on a slider an eight ot gamakatsu circle hook a huge chunk of frozen white perch. I'm gonna see what that does. I'm gonna throw out two catfish rods to start with. For the carp, I'm using this 24 gram method lead with a number six hook with a fake piece of plastic corn on a hair rig. I've got some Panko Jello sweet corn pack bait here. I've got some of this Procure Super Gel, the sweet corn flavor with the, the chartreuse coloring in it. We're just putting that on the fake corn to give a little something extra and then I'm just going to tuck that into the ball we're going to cast that out oh first customer of the day there we go all right a nice average size carp yeah there you go we like that fake corn with the pro cure flavor on it same spot Look at that, right in the bottom lip. It's exactly what a hair rig's designed to do. That's a fatter fish. This one feels like 15 pounds, 18 pounds, something around there. Got another fish here. That one's a fighter. Woo. 
This one feels just a touch bigger than the last one, but it's definitely longer and more muscular. I can tell this is a big fish because he's not running fast. He's just kind of doing what he wants. Oh, we got another one over here. I can just see my other line going crazy. Oh, jeez. Okay. This is why having good rod holders is important. You get a double like this, just let the rod holder fight him for a little bit. This guy is thick. This is, that is a muscular carp. Oh my goodness. Let's see. Oh. Man, that guy's built like one of those Spanish carp. Oh, that's a big fish. Oh, he might be over 30. Check that monster out. Look at that. Whew. Let's weigh him up. I'm a beast. Get in there. Oh, nice tail slap. 27 and a half. Whew. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, he's so thick too. Look at the how thick his body is. All right, he's too big for the keep net. We're putting him back. All right, 27 and a half. Woo! All right. Let's go deal with that catfish. Oh, that was a nice catfish. There we go, guys. First catfish of the day. Caught on fake corn, number six hook, and panko and jello. Man, I can't tell you how many times I have caught very nice catfish on this rig. 13 pounds. We got another one right there. There we go. There we go, nice average little carp. Holy mackerel, the wind and the rain just kicked off. Blew me about 20 feet downstream. I've got two 28 pound anchors in the water. Wind didn't care. So my anchors have finally stuck good. It looks like I'm in a new spot. So I'm gonna have to reposition all my rods. When fishing in the winter, the general rule of thumb is don't sit in one spot for more than 15 minutes without a bite. If you don't get any action, move. Now, if you aren't fishing as many rods as I am, the same thing applies with just one or two rods. But instead of you moving, just recast. So I'd put two rods up there, nothing happened in 15 minutes, I'd recast them there. Nothing happened in 15 minutes, I'd recast them over there. And then once I'd kind of hit all the spots you can hit from that location, then I would move. Oh my, what's that bright thing in the sky? Is I, I think that's the sun. I haven't seen it for a long, long time. Oh. Nice little buzzer beater. My 15 minute alarm went off right as that uh, fish was being landed. Another very nice carp. Look at that. Oh, between the pack bait and the fish slime, everything gets gross. Even if you don't end up moving, if you have one or two rods that have just sat there and done nothing for more than 15 minutes, pick them up, check your bait, recast them out there. Just see what's going on. If you're having a hard time finding cheap method leads here in the States, Get yourself a slider and then use one of these one ounce sand claw leads, which you can get at Cabela's. They grip pack bait very well. There we go. Well, this spot isn't exactly red hot, but sometimes it takes a little bit for things to warm up. So. I'll give it a few more minutes, but if I don't start hooking fish every six, 10 minutes or so, I'm gonna move spots. Oh, round two. There we go, another beautiful, fat, feisty common. Ooh, 
Caddy. Another beautiful carp. Oh, 20 pounds on the dot. Smallest fish of the day. Oh, look at this teeny tiny guy. There we go, a cute little tiny one. Three carp in under 10 minutes, all from the same spot. They tend to school up and they'll sit there and just kind of feed on this spot once they find it. So you gotta get back out there quickly. That's why I use pack baits and that's why I use fake corn. Because it allows you to just pack some bait on there, cast back out and you're fishing again. If you spend a minute or two fiddling with your hair rig trying to rebait it, the fish already clean out the spot and they're gone. So you want to get back out there quickly when the action's good. This is a great spot, but there's a load of snags. Half my rods are already snagged up. That one, that one, and that one. So I'm going to pull up anchor and see if I can't free my rods. Well, before I move spots, I've got to weigh up all my fish. I've got a bunch of carp in the keep net. So let's see how much that weighs. Seventy-nine. 20 pounds, 27 and a half pounds, 79 pounds. That equals 126 and a half pounds of carp plus a 13 pound blue catfish, which puts us at 139 and a half pounds of fish. Not too bad for uh, two hours of fishing. Two of the three rods that were snagged up broke off, so that's not great. But uh, let's see if we can find a spot that isn't all spooked up. Never fished this hole before. I'm curious to see what happens. Well, this spot was a bit of a bust. Got a couple bites, but no hookups, but I did rig up my rod, so let's go try a new spot. There we go. Nice little guy. Well, only six minutes into this new spot, and we already got a fish in the bag, so uh, not so bad. Yeah. Look at the colors on this guy. Look how bright gold he is. A nicer one. There we go. Nice carp. Oh, this one's 12 pounds. There you go. Oh, there's number four just hooked up. Look at the belly on that one. 15 pounds. is one of those fish that moves the whole boat. My guess is this guy's around 13, 14 pounds. Let's weigh him up. 13 pounds on the dock. Oh, 15 and a half. There we go. Nice big boy. Right, guys it's the end of the day it's time to wrap this up let's see if i've made the challenge i need 200 pounds of carp and right now i think i have 182 plus whatever's in that keep sack everybody 
32 pounds. All right, so if my math is right, that puts us at 220 pounds of carp in one day, plus a 13 pound catfish. That's pretty awesome. Well, not too bad for a cold, wet day. It turned out to be pretty awesome fishing. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. By the way, I will be at the February 2020 Catfish Conference. Uh, so if you guys want to get together and, and meet me, I'm gonna be in Louisville, Kentucky on, in February. I'm gonna have a little booth. Uh, I'm gonna set up all my bank fishing gear, my cart fishing gear. Um, but at any rate, hopefully I'll see you there. And if you guys like this video, don't forget to click subscribe. We put out new videos every Saturday morning. Thanks for watching, guys.